What is the difference between friction and rolling resistance, and how they influence traction effort and braking distance? Let's have a closer look on a wheel on rail. Driving system provides moment to the driving axle. The moment m divided by the wheel radius equals traction force that accelerates the train. The traction force must not exceed force of friction to prevent the wheels from skidding. The force of friction equals the coefficient times vertical load on the axle. This is the friction coefficient which for steel on steel reaches nearly 0,8 at dry and clean laboratory conditions. Imagine, the train would be capable to drive 40 degrees uphill if it had all wheels drive and no cars to tow. In real conditions the friction coefficient is around 0,4 on the wet and dirty track. When the driving moment is too high, or the contact load is too low, the driving wheel starts skidding, and driving power is not utilized efficiently. Let's have a close look at the contact face between the wheel and the rail. When the wheel stays still on the rail, the contact forces distribute symmetrically around the axle causing no rotational moment. As soon as the wheel starts traveling the contact loads move towards traveling direction. Center of load is ahead of the axle. This phenomena changes orientation of the total force of contact face where the vertical is still the load on the axle. The horizontal constituent of the contact force is the rolling resistance force that drags the wheel opposite to driving direction. The relations between rolling resistance force and the vertical load is called rolling resistance coefficient and it is around 0,002 for steel wheel on the rail in average track conditions. The softer the wheel and the pavement, the higher the coefficient is, and this is the reason why road trucks are not capable to tow tens of trailers as trains do easily. How can we now calculate stopping distance of the vehicle? Can we predict? Now, operator hits the brake pedal, and the vehicle slows down at constant deceleration that equals braking force divided by its mass. How do we know the braking force? Simply divide the braking moment, provided by the brake's producer, by the wheel diameter. Stopping time equals delta of velocity which in this case is traveling speed, divided by acceleration. The area of the triangle under the velocity line equals stopping distance and it can be calculated by formula. If you want to see the course of braking distance versus time, you need to draw an integral of velocity. The blue line of braking distance equals the blue area under the velocity line. Can we predict braking performance and stopping distance at design stage, taking into account that not all wheels are braked and the wheel's load is uneven? Yes, we can. Our design tool enables calculating of every axle load. The user can select which of the axles are braked and provide braking moment. The tool not only calculates the braking distance, max possible deceleration and stopping distance but also checks if the wheels may block and slip due to overbraking. Free of charge Excel files are available to download from InBeura website.